Welcome to the Black Evolution. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Dabby Daniel, and I have a very special guest, Miss Kid Culture Productions. We are now doing part two, calling out police brutality, and we are not doing any music. So you know whenever I have no music, you know it's a real issue. We are now entering the second part of this series on stopping police brutality. Tyler, what are your thoughts on this police brutality case, my brother? First, I want to say thank you for having me on here, Daniel. All right, no problem, sir. And I want to say this has to stop. And we need some tired of getting on there, talking about the same thing over and over again. Police mm-hmm. brutality. It has to end now, and I'm calling on the Senate, United States Senate, to pass the George Floyd Justice and Police Act to end this mess now. Mm-hmm. We're not playing. We're tired. Yeah, and yeah, I'm tired, I'm too. Up. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of every time I go on here, there's always another case of police brutality. I'm sick of it. You're sick of it. I'm sick of it. We're all sick of it. After the George Floyd verdict, there was another case of police brutality. Her name was Mika Bryant, 16 years old, shot by the police. Now, people try to justify it saying she had a knife. She had a knife. They could have used restraint. They could have used restrictions. They could have used the taser. But what did they do? With us, as a people, what they always do, shoot to kill. Use all excessive force. Use full force against us. But don't use full force against white supremacy. And then recently, there was another police shooting in North Carolina. This time, they were searching. They did a search warrant for a quote-unquote black man. His name was Mr. Andrew Brown Jr. He was shot and killed by the police. And now they're calling to demand to release the body cam footage. This is ridiculous. Two cases after George Floyd, and during the time of George Floyd, there was another police case of police retired, this time with a 13-year-old in Chicago. This is ridiculous. This bill of the George Floyd Police Act needs to pass now. We have to hold these cops accountable for what they're doing to black people and to everybody, but mostly black people. We have to stop this case after case after case of police brutality. And the only way we're going to stop police brutality is if we make it stop. We have to make it stop. I'm sick of it. Tyler, what's your thoughts on this? I echo those sentiments. I think that the United States failed Makaya Bryant. She was already a foster child being she called the police because she you know, threatened girls was following her home, bullying her. And she, she's the one that ends up dead. And people are blaming her. Oh, death, when are they going to stop this mess? Mm-hmm. And start taking this mess serious. Yeah, I'm getting When are black people going to stop being on trial for their own death? Mm-hmm. Police officers. They always try to blame... They try to blame the um, people who get killed. They always try to use victimization. They blame the victim. They blame the victim. They say, oh, he had a criminal record. When, it, they, when it's a black person, they want to break up their the whole criminal history. They want to break up their life story every day. Mm-hmm, because they don't care about black people. They don't care about black people. They see them as a criminal and a threat. And that they view the cops as, quote, unquote, neutralizing the threat. And neutralizing the, the, um, the enemy. That's how they view us, Tyler. They view us as the enemy. They view us as the occup- They view us as criminals and thugs. This is why they use the most brutal force when it becomes their own people. They don't want to hold them accountable. They try to cover it up. They have these officers go on administrative leave, so on and so forth. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of seeing police brutality at case after case after case after case after case after case. When is enough enough? We just had got done with the George Floyd verdict, and now. We going on to Dante Wright. They just had a funeral of Dante Wright showing a case of police brutality. When is enough enough, people? I'm getting sick and tired of seeing this mess. Over and over and over and over. We keep talking about the same thing. Over and over and over and over and over and over. It's like it's nonstop. When's it going in? Brothers and sisters. Also, I want to talk about Mr. Brown that got killed in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Yeah, before we get into that, calling, yeah. Calling on the sheriff and mm-hmm. the sheriff's department to release the tape on what happened mm-hmm. with Mr. Brown. 
Yeah. So before we get into a full discussion, though, we are going to show the footage of what we have so far on these news clips with um, Adam, t Doll, Mika Bryant, and Andrew Brown. So this is what we have so far. Keep in mind, these videos are very disturbing. So if you don't want to watch them, then don't watch them. But if you if you want to see them, you can go ahead and see them. But afterwards, we're going to continue to talk about police brutality and the shooting of unarmed black people and the treatment, how we get treated by the police in this country. Stay tuned for the rest of this segment. Give me a light, give me a light, give me a light, give me a light now. Why are you over here? I was just passing Bob, man. Where's your car? It's, I ain't even got a car, I gotta get that cement. How we're making investments, how we're intervening to do better for our young people who are here so that they can walk a life in their streets, in their neighborhoods, without fear, without feeling like they are prey, wherever the violence comes from, wherever it comes from. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out these other videos from USA Today to stay up to date with all the latest news. Protesters voiced outrage in Columbus, Ohio on Tuesday after a black teenage girl was fatally shot by a police officer. Authorities said the girl had lunged at two people with a knife. They also say the officers involved were answering a 911 call about an attempted stabbing. Columbus police released the officer's body camera footage of Tuesday's shooting just hours later. Police Chief Michael Woods says that the video shows the victim holding a knife after officers arrived and charging towards another girl. A police officer then opened fire on the girl with the knife as she collapsed against a car parked in the driveway. As per policy, officers immediately assessed the female for injuries, summoned a medic, and began CPR. Authorities described the victim as a 15-year-old girl, but family members have identified her as 16-year-old Micaiah Bryant. Wood said that the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation has opened an inquiry and appealed for calm until the case is closed. Protesters had already begun gathering near the crime scene earlier in the day. The shooting comes just as peaceful marchers across the country took to the streets after Derek Chauvin was convicted of murdering George Floyd, whose death last summer sparked anti-racism protests around the world. The Columbus police officer who opened fire on Tuesday was not identified, but Wood said that he would be taken off the street pending an investigation. This morning, seven deputies in Pasquotank County, North Carolina, are on administrative leave following the fatal shooting of Andrew Brown Jr. The sheriff says three other deputies resigned, but their decision to leave was unrelated to the incident. Earlier this week, local authorities say deputies were attempting to serve Brown a search and arrest warrant related to a felony drug charge before the situation took a deadly turn. We've got one male, 42 years of age, gunshot to the back. We do have a rival pulse at this time. 
Eyewitnesses told her NBC affiliate in Raleigh that Brown was shot while driving away. The sheriff did not disclose details on what may have prompted his deputies to open fire, but says if there is evidence they violated the law, they will be held accountable. There is absolutely nothing to hide. The video has not been released. We're waiting on the district attorney. According to state law, the body camera footage can only be released by a court order. On Friday, Governor Roy Cooper joined the growing calls for transparency, tweeting the body camera footage should be made public as quickly as possible. Andrew Brown! Andrew Brown! Protests stretch into a third night with community members and family demanding justice for Brown. I'm trying to get justice for my cousin because he was gunned down and it don't make sense. Just days after the conviction of Derek Chauvin, another city on edge, facing mounting pressure to release details about a deadly law enforcement shooting. And later on this morning, the mayor and city manager of Elizabeth City will be holding a press conference. Meanwhile, the president has also been briefed on this shooting. It's likely that he will leave it up to local authorities when it comes to the timetable of the release of that body camera footage. Kristen, Peter. All right, Kathy Park, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now. Thank you guys for joining the Black Evolution once again. This is Dr. Daniel, and we apologize if you had to watch those disturbing videos about the killings of unarmed black people, but we want to let you know that although as uncomfortable as it is, it is equally as uncomfortable that the police continue to do this and continue to try to get away with it. You saw with the Andrew Brown case that they had tried to say they're officers on, on administrative leave. You know what that is. That is when they're going to cover up the situation by, a lot, by doing their own independent investigation into the police to try to cover their tracks and try to have themselves be held, not be held accountable. They want to say, oh, we did no wrong. We did no wrong. Um, we, we, we were doing a great thing and, uh, uh, and this and that. It was, they're trying to, they're going to try to justify it. They're going to try to justify it. Tyler, what are your thoughts on this? man? Now, we have to stop there. The way they do things, we have to change. We have to receive police in the way we want it now. It's time for us to stand up and take control of our country. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's time for us to take control of our communities. It's time for us to stop these people keep staying at home. All police officers ain't bad. We know that. We need that. That's that last week. The good ones need to continue.
they corrupt and they do dirty things to people. They, what they do, they brutalize and mm-hmm. take advantage of the people. We got to stop that. We got to stop them by all fronts. Mm-hmm. Go after the, go after the corrupt they, cops. That George Floyd, just the police and that, won't cross that. Mm-hmm. I call on the United States Senate again to pass the damn bill. I mean, not playing. Yeah, stop wait, stop wasting time and pass the bill already. You already passed the anti hate crime bill with the Asians. Now, when it comes to black people, I'm calling you out. President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the House and the Congress and the Senate, I'm calling y'all out. Y'all ain't wasting no time. Executive order here, executive order there. Passing a crime bill for the Asians when it comes to black people, you taking your sweet time, even though you had three major police brutality cases on your watch and it continue to have the police brutality cases on your watch. Yet you do nothing and you waste time and you you debate and you do this and that. When it comes to other communities, you're on top of it. You're on top of it. And I appreciate you being on top of it for other communities. But when it comes to black people, the people you say that you have your back, Mr. Joe Biden, president. You say you have their back, but then when it comes time to do something, you don't want to do it. Or you waiting and telling everybody this and wait and we have to do this. And you taking your sweet time. You're not passing the bill and everything. Just go ahead and pass the bill already. I, stop you right there. I do agree with you on that, on certain points of that, but it had, the House already passed. The United States House Representative already passed the bill. It's the second time passing that George Floyd Justice Policing Act. But it has to go to the United States Senate. Then it has, after it goes to the Senate, it goes to the White House for the president to sign. So I do want, I, I agree with you on certain things of that, but the executive order is already with some of this stuff. And that the bill is passed in the House, we just, it just has to go through the Senate and up to the White House. But I do, I do agree with you, they have to do more. Yes. All right, so that's the main point. The main point is they have to do more. They can't be waking, sitting there. It's like, it seems to me and to all of us that they are sitting there twiddling their thumbs, not getting anything done. But when it comes to other communities, they're passing it left and right like it's no tomorrow. Black people have been brutalized longer and farther than Asians and everything else. I'm not saying the Asians are lesser than us or anything else. I'm saying that black people have been brutalized and everything else and have everything done to us that there's no bills being passed or when they do get passed they are taking all this time just to be enforced this you is know, a problem I, 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 want, I do want to add to this we need to watch out what happens in the Senate when it gets there because they have a tendency when the bill gets there to strip in and take certain things out that they don't like mm-hmm. different provisions so we gotta keep an eye out for that and make sure everything is in there stays in it Mm, that is true. And it's the same bill that was passed by the House. Because we've seen historically that's happened. <clears throat> once it gets to the White House, once it gets to the Senate, and then to the White House, it's a whole, it's a different bill. Yeah. And then they go through all these policies like gerrymandering and filibustering. Where they want to get rid of stuff that they don't like and filibuster and filibuster. Basically, filibustering is all it is for people who don't know is waiting, is uh, taking your sweet time. To get things done. Oh, I'm a filibuster. I'm a filibuster. I'm a filibuster. That's giving you people a bunch of filler and everything else. And not getting down to the nitty gritty of passing the bill. They want to take their sweet, their sweet time. Do all these political tricks. Just to mm-hmm. stop the bill from passing. They got to eliminate the filibuster too. Get a lot of this stuff passed. Mm-hmm. This bill is the, is the start. It's not the, it's the floor. It's not the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I also want to say this to black people. Stop celebrating these symbolic victories. Yes, Derek Chauvin was convicted. Yes, that is important. He, he should have been convicted. But my thing is, everybody was celebrating like this is the end of it. No, this is not the end of it. You yeah, clearly see it. it's the beginning of it. We're going to hold these cops accountable. Every time they should be convicted and they should be sentenced. We need to stay on it. Stay on the fight. Stay on the fight. Stay on the fight. Stay on it. Put more pressure. Put pressure on them. Put pressure on them. Put pressure on them. Put pressure on them. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. And stop police brutality from happening. And you need to keep on. I want to say, too, pay attention to what this judge is doing. Mm-hmm. When the sentencing comes down. And oh, we got to also, too, pay attention to the upcoming case for 
the um, other cops that were involved in George Floyd's death was helping Derek Chauvin. Mm-hmm. Gotta watch that. Make sure they get convicted. Get the same time he gets. Mm-hmm. We gotta make sure that he gets the time he's supposed to get. We can't stand by and do nothing. We need to get indignant. Mm-hmm. Let them know that we're watching them. We're not gonna take it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, recently, the case they because get their knees off our neck. Mm-hmm. Stand up against oppression. Stand up against oppression. And also, we need to keep doing what we're doing with the house calls, where they're going to um, their houses and everything else, showing up, letting them know we do not support a murderer. And there was a after the whole Dante Wright case, the Kim Kim Porter, the officer who shot Dante Wright, left the scene with her kids and everyone else in the city, barricaded the house. It's amazing to me that the city just barricaded the house to protect a murderer and a convicted and a criminal. But when it comes to black people, they don't even waste half of that money to invest in taking care of black yeah. people. It's a damn shame. It is. It's so sick and disgusting. After, that, after the verdict, the governor, Florida governor, passed the law that um, basically is. It gives people that are driving through protests the right to run over protesters. And it gives cops the right to just arrest them. And those protesters will spend, spend the night in jail. They won't be able to post bail that same day. So we gotta watch out for that. And there's other states that's gonna pass through the war too. Mm-hmm. And that's what we gotta understand. It's not just policing, it's not, not just at least the family and black people want to protect the First Amendment is under that. Mm-hmm. Freedom of speech. We gotta protect the First Amendment. Just mm-hmm. like these so-called people that are pro-guns and stuff, they protect the Second Amendment. We gotta protect the First. Mm-hmm. And make, make sure we won't let them know we won't be silenced, but we're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. We'll be loud and proud. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so Tyler, going into his final thoughts on this issue of police brutality and what is the solution to end all this police brutality? The solution is we hope that things should always be the it should be a way for us to alert everybody what's going on. And I hear people saying eliminate protesting. No, we can't do that. Protesting is what that George Floyd's case taken serious. Protesting as we got Dante right, they take it serious. Protesting puts a lot of attention on things. But we gotta we can't just only protest. We gotta fight in the court and make sure the stuff gets done. We gotta fight in in D C and make sure these laws get passed. Mm-hmm. My final thoughts are we gotta fight in these war games and these work things to make sure our voices are getting heard and we Yes are, sir getting what we deserve economically too. If people keep thinking that um, civil rights and the plight of what black people want to do is just brutality. It's more than that. It's also brutality, but guess what? It ends with economics. Mm-hmm. It ends with spirituality. I agree with you on that. We gotta march, but we gotta. We can't just march with blacks. We gotta get like we had before in the civil rights movie, Jewish, Muslim, um, Asians, everybody. Mm-hmm. It can't just be a black issue. It gotta be an American issue for it to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Because unless you defend against police brutality. And everything else, they will continue to do it not just against black people, but against everybody else. They did it also against a black Latino officer and everything, and they didn't care. So they will do continue to do this, not only just, and there's also been a few cases of white people getting brutalized by the police. So we got. I want to say, too, to all the people that are out there protesting, be careful, look out for anything that's not right. Mm-hmm. If you see infiltration or people that's not a part of it, 
make sure they make sure you get them out of there because yeah. they're dangerous. Yep, they'll they'll try to incite rioting and looting and they will try they will try to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm-hmm. Well, so watch out for the infiltrators, the protesters who are boots on the ground. Watch out for those infiltrators and people who want to infiltrate the movement and everything else and uh, cause rioting and cause all that stuff. You got to watch out for them. Watch out for wolves and she's clothing. Don't let no false false uh, person go into your organization or your movement and they're not with you. Don't let nobody also... We got to talk about this too in the next episode, race hustlers. Stop letting these race hustlers come in and try to dissuade you on the agenda. They're going to try to control the movement to make themselves rich off of black death. I'm going to call out the BLM founder purchasing those properties and profiting off of black death. Stop doing that. What is wrong with you? Even the own organization of BLM doesn't even know what the money is going. And you're going to profit off of black death. So stop that. You damn race hustler. That's what you are. A race hustler. So you got to stop against these race hustlers. Stop police brutality. The only way you're going to stop it is you're going to have to make it stop. How do you make it stop? Protest. That's the first step. Second step, getting these laws passed and getting complete and total revolutionary change in the system of America. What is your revolution? A revolution to complete total over. Over, over change and completely break down the current system of policing because it's not the policing, it's not the training or nothing it's the way how these police officers are trained they are trained to shoot to kill, shoot and ask questions later, that's how they're trained we gotta stop that too so I'm closing off this podcast with stay strong, continue to fight against oppression and as always, black power destroy the blue wall yep. destroy the blue wall and black power that's how we're going to end off this podcast this is Damn Daniel and Kid Coast Productions, and we signing off.